Happy Thanksgiving, everybody, and welcome to Inside the 18. I'm Michael Majid. With me is ex-MLS goalkeeper Patrick McLean. Hello. And current LA Galaxy goalkeeper Matt Lampson. What's up, man? How are you doing? Gobble, gobble. Gobble, <laughs> gobble. Uh, this is an amazing uh, time. It, you know what's incredible is the fact that we're able to do this in the future. Uh, I love the fact that uh, we've been able to uh, transplant ourselves two weeks into Thanksgiving uh, with the motif we got going on here. <laughs> we got the cranberries out. Uh, we got your festive... Uh, uh, beach attire for Thanksgiving. Nothing, <laughs> nothing says Thanksgiving like uh, a T-shirt and shorts. That's how we do it in California right here. Yep. Um, guys, first off, before we start the episode, I just want to say uh, a thankful uh, thank you to all of you out there for rating, reviewing, and subscribing the show. Uh, we're doing incredible, honestly, with the reviews. We're getting so many reviews. Uh, guys, I know you want us to, to read everyone on the air. We're going to try our best, uh, but honestly... Uh, it's been overwhelming. I, I didn't expect this many people. By the way, right now, as we're doing this, I'm just realizing I feel like Loki on Asgard. This is why he got so upset, because I've got literally two Vikings <laughs> sitting right ne in, like, next to me, and I'm in between them. And like now I understand where that animosity came from from Loki. Uh, wow, such a nerdy reference on the Marvel Cinematic <laughs> No, I got universe. it 100%. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people did. Yeah, I'm, sure they, I'm sure they did. I think everybody saw yeah. Avengers, and everybody saw <laughs> Thor. And they, like, that was probably their first thought as soon as they saw the picture. Was, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure that's exactly the direction they were going. By the way, also, I think everyone's thinking, like, is this an ad for Disney Plus? Is this what's going to start happening right now? For, <laughs> for once, no. <laughs> yeah. I've heard about 80 billion of those. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of those going on. Matt, do you watch Mandalorian? Is that a thing for you? Uh, I tried to yesterday. What'd you think? But no. See, the, the demand was so high that the streaming service it took like 30 minutes to load. It was problems all over the place. Did you hear about that? No, yeah, I didn't hear yeah. about that. So, so many people were subscribing and so many people were trying to watch that it w the load times were through the roof and tons of technical difficulties. I was one of the ones that, that uh, succumbed to it. So I just watched Brink and Johnny Tsunami instead. Brink. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> oh. right. Look at these guys right. binding, bonding over That's Brink. Wild. I love this. Fantastic. No, see, I, didn't have, I didn't have cable when I was a kid so, and I loved to like skate. And I never got to watch Brink. So whenever I got to watch Brink, it was like a big deal for me. And it's I was on there, Pat. With that <laughs> I might have to check it's it out. It's on there. <laughs> this has literally now actually become an ad for Disney+. Plus. That's amazing. So uh, you're Disney, welcome. you're very welcome for that. Uh, we'll promo code I-18. <laughs> we'll send you an invoice. <laughs> yeah. That would be amazing. Uh, honestly, guys, keep sending in those reviews. Remember... Please, in the review, leave your Instagram handle or your Twitter handle, uh, because otherwise we have no idea where you're from. We can't send you your scarf in the mail. We can't do any of those sorts of things. Uh, we can't shout you out, because uh, we have to use your handle that's on your Apple Podcasts, and those are kind of weird sometimes. Like, uh, it's usually just people's like user logins. Mine's Goalkeeper290. It's weird that you can't find somebody with, with that alone. The way you said that <laughs> scared me so much. You're like, it's weird. We can't find people <laughs> that way. It's like they tried to do that on purpose. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we just don't want to have anything to do with you guys. Uh, already. Oh, dude, this is like a Cooligans episode right now. Like, we haven't even gotten to soccer yet. Uh, we'll get to there at some point, guys. Uh, but anyway, uh, keep shouting those out, guys. Please th keep sending in those reviews. And uh, let's just start getting to listener questions right now. We're thankful for all our insiders. We want to get to some of these listener questions. Uh, so let's get to this first one right now. Oh, before we do that, because I'm terrible at segues, uh, shout out to Tampa Bay Rowdies keeper Macklin Robinson uh, for the kind words. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, Matt, but he said, uh, two of the most fantastic goalkeepers and individuals I've ever had the pleasure to work with at Lamp Strong. I think he's referring to you right there. Sounds like inspired me to pursue <laughs> professional soccer and gave me the tools to do so. And then he was talking about Bushy, who we're going to have in a future episode. Um, man, uh, what's, honestly. <laughs> what's interesting about that is I don't know if that was a backhanded compliment like, well, geez, if this guy can do it, then I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> or if I actually helped him, like, oh, man, thanks for everything you've done. Uh, yeah, I coached him at Ohio Dominican before he transferred to DePaul. Uh, he's a great kid, great work ethic, and, um, and a lot of talent. Um, and clearly he's, he's using it, and, and it's paid off for him. So I'm happy I could help him uh, achieve what he's doing now. Um, either whatever way that type of comment went, 
However I wanted to interpret it, I'm glad what he's doing what he's doing. <laughs> I, I'm going to interpret it in the positive way. Okay. Uh, <laughs> by the way, also, my favorite thing is that I'm going to totally roast you right here, Macklin. Uh, Macklin's got his modeling info on his Twitter. Oh, hand. No. Yeah, he, he's got that going on, dude. Good looking dude. It's like Pat McClain. Yeah, I know. What's I up? Know. What's the deal with it? <laughs> I don't know what you guys are Where talking about. Where do my about? modeling contracts come from? I'm literally, people are like, no, comedy. Why don't you try that thing? <laughs> Like, are so you sure? Out? I don't think you understood. I spent a lot of time playing PDL soccer. There's a, <laughs> there's a big market for that in the, the modeling world. People are big fans of that. We make uh, our money in meal vouchers. Okay. Uh, anyway, let's move on to the first listener question here. Uh, this one comes from Logan Bittner, and he goes uh, to Matt. How did he train on his own, or like what type of drills what? would he do? Yes. <laughs> like what type of – look, I'm talking like Logan. Logan wrote it like this. You got to be cool with the kids. That's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, it's the yeah, way the kids true. talk, right? How did uh, he train on his own or like what type of drills would he do by himself? So the best thing to do uh, if you are training by yourself is to improve your feet. Uh, whether it's, and I could say that in twofold, you can train your feet as in ladders, uh, footwork, things like that, uh, agility, but more specifically with the ball. That's so easy to do that you can work on your touch, your passing, your long balls. I did that for pretty much three, four times a week, uh, even in professional, uh, even before I, uh, I mean, before I became professional, I was doing it. Once I turned professional, I did it even more. Um, so that's so easy to do. Uh, in packing a test, we both would stay after uh, training in Chicago and we would stay for 30, 45 minutes just training our feet, and you can do that on your own. And it's uh, it's the best way to improve your game uh, that sets you apart from other goalkeepers because uh, goalkeepers are expected to play with their feet now. And when you can do that on your own time and then also uh, be a goalkeeper and save the ball like we're paid to do, uh, it, it sets you apart, and it's a, it's a huge plus to have. So that's what I would suggest. Uh, don't even don't even try using your hands. Uh, just focus on your feet. And uh, once you start to try and do things by yourself in terms of actual goalkeeping, uh, it gets a lot more difficult, a lot more tedious. Um, so I'd say footwork. Yeah, I, I think that's really important. And, you know, by the way, I can't imagine you two get, getting at it at Chicago fire training uh, at the same time. I mean, my gosh, it's like world's strongest man competition meets <laughs> goalkeeping. It's just insane. Um, Matt, dude, for, for a big guy, I love the fact that you brought that up because like, uh, and by the way, everyone's a big guy to me. So, um, <laughs> but uh, you've got like a feathery, I was telling Patrick, you've got a feathery touch uh, with your feet. Because <laughs> I'm just like looking at this huge dude. I'm like, oh, he's going to just hammer that ball. And it's just like a little loft of ball. Like I'm like, oh, that, that took a lot of time. That took a lot of time. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, all right. Let's move on to this next one. This one comes from Cade Fink at Cade underscore Fink. And he goes, both Matt, and John have been quite on quite a few teams in the MLS. What's it like for a goalkeeper to change clubs so often? So, Matt, you've spent a lot of time. Obviously, Patrick, you can also yep. attest to this, too. Uh, Cade, uh, what about our co-host here? Patrick, he's, he spent some time. He might be able to answer this question, too. That's all right, Cade. I'll just be hanging out over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's open it up to Matt. Uh, so, so what's it like? Um, what's, what's that like for a goalkeeper? Um, you know, it's a little bit different than a field player, yeah. you know, uh, going from club to club. Yeah, you know, you've got to focus on what you do well. Uh, that's the number one thing, and, and be proud of what you do well. And uh, But the, the, the most important thing is you need to find out how the head coach wants you to play and play according to what they want. Because ultimately, if you're just playing the way you want to play and it's not the, how the coach wants it, you're not going to be seeing the field. And so – you need to appease the coach. You want to learn how you can be the best goalkeeper you can be in his or her system. That's, that's the bottom line is you've got to adjust very quickly to what that coach is looking for in their goalkeeper. Um, and sometimes that's difficult. Sometimes that takes a little bit more time than others. Uh, sometimes coaches uh, will ask a lot less of their goalkeepers. Some teams will ask a lot more, and that's something that you have to figure out on your own. Um, and you can talk to the coaches about it, but uh, it is very difficult. It's very difficult to do. Um, and some teams uh, I've had success with, and then some teams it's a lot more difficult to get into that starting 11. Um, but either way, um, focusing on what you do well 
and going out to training every single day and working on getting better for yourself will help you in the long run regardless. Yeah. Did either one of you guys ever do the pool goalkeeper thing where you were uh, an MLS pool goalkeeper? No. no. Okay. Okay. No, Did I that make that up in my head? No, 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 that, no. That was a thing. thing, right? Okay. Yeah, okay. that was definitely a thing. Okay. Those guys, yeah, that was – typically, if, you, if you're not familiar with, like, the MLS system and how that works and the pool goalkeeper, what used to happen, and I think it still happens. I, I think, think there's, there's like still one or two. Yeah. yeah. Is <clears throat> they will have, like, a home club, and they'll train with that home club. But then, as needed, because the MLS is all technically owned by the MLS – those goalkeepers can just go to whatever team is in need at the time. And then they train with that team and sit on the bench for a game or whatever it is that that team needs. So that's what a pool goalkeeper is. And the, I mean, the travel associated with that, yep. I feel like you got to be kind of like, you got to be like a young guy to, to make that one work. Yeah. That's not something you're doing in your, in your thirties, probably <laughs> doing, not. doing that, <laughs> you know, probably a, a wife or kid or probably is not a big fan of that type of a life. Yeah. Uh, but like 21 right out of college, like, yeah. Hey, that's the kind of yeah, a thing. That'd be awesome. It's kind yeah. of similar to like yeah. an NFL kicker, you know, who's, who's right. a free agent kicker and yeah. the kind of just going from team to team type of thing, you know, kind of, we had a situation with San Francisco recently and everyone's like, is this an NFL podcast now? Um, <laughs> now hey, kicking guys, it's still soccer related. Do you understand how yes, it works? Sort of. Um, no, I mean, that's, that's such a good point. What you brought up, uh, Matt, in regards to having to adjust to another coach, because I remember I, I heard one MLS coach and I'm not going to name him, put him on blast, but he you said, he's like, it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you'll do right, it. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure out who Peter Novak, Peter Novak said, <laughs> Peter Novak told me that uh, he didn't want to think about the goalkeeper unless the goalkeeper made an error. Uh, and then other goal, uh, other um, MLS coaches have said, you know, the goalkeeper is a vital part of my system. And like we were, you know, speaking about certain go uh, mm -hmm. coaches recently that that's like uh, like Greg Berhalter with the U.S. men's national team. You know, he's yeah. a very vital piece of the of, of the puzzle right there, you know. Um, so that's got to be tough, man, because what if you like to play a certain way or what if your strengths are that direction and a club has signed you, they brought in another coach from after you've been signed who wants to play a completely different system. Like That's got to be a tough adjustment for you, right? Yeah, uh, coming from Columbus uh, where Greg was hammering in, play out of everything, play out of everything, and then going to Chicago, which we still kind of played. Uh, once I went to Minnesota, there was no playing, and – if I tried to play, it would be, uh, it would be, dis uh, I don't know the word I'm looking for. They wouldn't like it. They wouldn't like it. They okay. wouldn't like it. So there's, there's a lot of things that you have to figure out. Um, and so I had to figure out, you know, what balls do they like? What balls yep. do they not like? Yep. Um, and yeah, it's difficult. It's very difficult. Um, but that's, that's what keeps you in the league is, is, uh, if the coach thinks you're good, then you're going to have a job. And if they don't, then you're going to have to look yeah. elsewhere. Yeah. What it makes me kind of think of is, uh, is in, and I'm just going to use it to stand up comedy, you know, because I did not play in major league soccer. However, I did spend some time, uh, in training with a D three teams in the USL. If you guys remember that USL D three, that was a, that was a thing. <laughs> that was a thing. That was a thing that they did. They tried. <laughs> you want to, you want to tell us more about it? So <laughs> anyway, from a comedy standpoint, oh dude, I can tell you about a team that was uh, run by a, a missionary program. Uh, there's Ooh, a lot of yeah. Wow. There's there's some crazy stuff that was happening in the. Well, BYU the, has a dude. BYU had a, had a team. Yeah, BYU yeah. had a team. Yeah. Go Do Cougars. they still have a team going I, on? I think they still have a like a PDL. Yeah, because they, yeah. they didn't have yeah because they didn't have a D1 team. So they had guys come there who were LDS, and they would play for the PDL team. Wow. Well, so they were actually pretty good because they were literally like a college team yeah. well, playing in the summer. Yeah. Technically, um, in the Mormon culture, like you go on your mission for yeah. two years, right? They were so, all 32. Exactly. So they're all coming back, <laughs> and they're like, they're like in their mid-20s exactly. playing for yeah. this grown PDL men. They were grown they men were playing grown, a PDL were team. Grown men. <laughs> we're like out there. We're children out there, basically. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, credit to them, too. Like, obviously, BYU's got a lot of money, but their production was like, solid yeah like some some solid production value there oh dude they put they i mean they looked like uh let's just say that they they put that budget into uh the team like it was a division one team yeah, which is for uh, sure which is pretty cool um shout out to the lds for doing that that's uh it's lds right latter-day saints okay 
All right, moving on. Don't this this episode, anyone. I'm not, dude. We we, we don't keep, want that e. We keep it PC. Yeah, we keep here. it PC here. We don't get that e. We don't get political. Uh, although apparently I shout out uh, and uh, call out MLS co- coaches, former MLS coaches, on the air right now. Uh, I will never play for Peter Novak. That's but a- you know what? Like <laughs> there are so many goalkeeper or uh, so many coaches that have that exact sentiment. Yeah, yes. is I don't care about the goalkeeper whatsoever until he gets scored on. Then it's his fault. Yeah, and. We joke about that, but honestly, that's very realistic. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got other goalkeeper or other coaches that genuinely know that that's part of the game. Mistakes happen, or oh, it's not solely a goalkeeper's fault when a goal happens. But uh, unfortunately, that Peter Novak sentiment is very real, very yeah. real, and it's it's uh, it's still alive. Dude, there's yeah. nothing worse. There's nothing worse than like when you've handled all your crosses clean, your distribution's been on point, you've made solid clean handling, and then like one shot, like you're slightly out of position, and then it was like that guy's trash. Right. <laughs> you're like, dude, what? I mean, that's the story of my career. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're always in position, dude. Yeah. I've, I've, trust me. I've, I've, uh. I did, I, I've been watching quite a bit of Matt Lampson lately, <laughs> and uh, you're, that is one thing about you, dude. You're always in position. You're yeah. like. You're literally like, I was talking to Patrick, I'm like, you're literally like a cinder block. Like, there's no way, like, people are going to get around you. Like, you're, <laughs> a you're mo- there. You're mobile cinder Yeah, I'm mobile. Yeah, <laughs> well, I don't I mean, like, say, you're just stuck there. I don't want to move that much. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, you're efficient with your movement. That's what it is. Yeah, um, thank you. I can think of, I can think of one coach in particular that Matt and I played for at different times who is very much like that, where it's like, I don't care about goalkeepers. You guys do your own thing. We're going to stay over here. You stay over there. And if it doesn't come to doesn't come together during the game, then it's probably the goalkeeper's fault. Yep. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's, let's you, get back you on. You can look into that if you so choose. <laughs> All right. Let's uh let, let's get back onto the uh the youth tip right here. Um because uh, obviously, you know, you played in the the Crew Academy. Um mm-hmm. And Evan Braidwood wants to know, how many times a week did you train when you were ages 14 to 17 at the Crew Academy? So, interestingly enough, I was uh, homegrown for the Crew, but I only played for the Crew Academy for maybe six months. It was the first ever year for the Academy. Wow. Because Pat and I were about the age that they didn't have the Academy growing up. So, 14 to 17, it was still club soccer. It was uh, State Cup was a huge thing. Regionals was a huge thing. Um, but even still, we were training maybe three times a week, uh, maybe four, but uh, it wasn't full-on academy at that point. Academy, we trained a lot more, but like I said, it was only for about six months. So uh, we had guys, uh, when I was 14 to 17, we played high school in, in the fall season because I'm from Ohio, so we played high school in fall. And then in the spring season, that was our competitive club, and that's when we, that's when we played state cup and regionals and things like that. So... Uh, it's a little bit different now. Uh, it's a lot different now than it yeah. was at that time. Yeah, and Evan, I think you play. I think you play in Minnesota, if uh, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're playing DA out there, dude. The DA now and what the huh. DA was then is like completely. The DA was just a label back then, right? Absolutely. Like it was just basically glorified club soccer. Like yes. The, yeah, it was like all-star teams, basically. You're like, oh, okay, these are the best players in this region. It's kind of like an ODP team, basically, and like slap the MLS logo on them. That's exactly thing, what right? happened. Yeah. Um, but that's awesome that you did the homegrown thing um, yeah. because uh, I think you were what? Were you the first homegrown signing or second homegrown signing? I was the signing? second, um, but I was the first that played a lot. I'll put it that way. Um, uh, for Columbus, at least. Um, but we, we, we took players from all over Ohio. There was people coming from uh, – Indianapolis there was people coming from Michigan to play uh, very similar to what you said Um, but I was also while I was at Ohio State uh, playing for Ohio State I would go and train with the first team Uh, so that actually helped when they wanted to sign me as a homegrown it qualified so uh, it was a little bit different back then obviously. Wow. I, uh, I think that, you know, uh, Evan, I think you really just need to understand right now what, what Matt and Patrick went through here is like they basically had to make their careers happen as opposed to you guys are very fortunate nowadays because uh, nowadays you guys have all these ty- type of tools. And, you know, obviously, you know, you got that great opportunity with the, with the homegrown, you know, situation and, and obviously guys going off to great schools and everything like that. But like it wasn't it wasn't that easy a path. Right. Like you had to kind of, uh, you know, kind of 
find the the resources to make it happen right I, I mean i'd argue that it's probably still not an easy path okay. i mean if you're in that system yeah do you have a an awesome op opportunity to be successful for sure but you're still gonna have to work your butt off because there's gonna be a lot of people who want the exact same things that you want and as long as you're keeping that in mind and and progressing accordingly then I mean, that's not going to be an easy thing. Yeah. So don't expect that. Yeah. Um, I want to move on to the next question here uh, because this is somebody that's worked very hard uh, their entire lives to, to craft the perfect question for Matt. <laughs> and uh, this comes from Tony Anderson one who may or may not be a goalkeeper at uh, UIC right now. <laughs> and he goes as a true expert and donut consumer myself, which donut do you expert Matt believe to be the best? Why can you all come to a consensus pick on the show? So actually, Matt, what we did is we uh, we have half a dozen donuts right here, and we're going to choose. We know that. If there's any. We know you can't eat it. Now, why don't you explain to our audience here, or some of the insiders here might not be familiar with your, your diet regimen, <laughs> what we're discussing here, because this is so inside baseball, what we're Gosh, doing right now. Is. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and Tony, I told you we'd actually do the question on the air. What, He's like, oh, I don't know. What would your go-to be? <laughs> so, Tony, I hope you cut your hair. <laughs> It he still ridiculous. looks like a handsome. It looked like one of the oh, <laughs> That's a great shot. Mm, but yeah. yeah. Uh, so he probably won't even get that. <laughs> no, he he won't. won't get that. Uh, He's like, it's not K-pop. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't even know what K-pop is. I understand that that's a thing, but um, dude, you haven't been around a lot of middle school kids. No, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. Goodness. Um, oh goodness. So I spend a lot I of time eat, around middle school. <laughs> the way I eat is pretty strict in terms of. Uh, I, I don't eat a lot of carbohydrates. Uh, it's pretty much meat and vegetables 90% uh, of the time. And that 10% of the time, I like to eat pizza and donuts. Donuts are li my lifeblood. Uh, if there's one thing in this world that makes me happy, it's donuts. Uh, and that's pretty much it. If I had to choose the type of donut, that would be like someone choosing their favorite child, which you're not allowed to do. God. Wow. So <laughs> let me talk you guys through. Well, here, I'm just going to actually put these in front of you here and see. Okay. I, I know you can't choose your favorite. So we've got, but why don't you discuss what three you, fields. Okay. Uh, yeah. These are yeast raised donuts. Yeast raised donuts are somewhat one of my favorites if I had to choose. Uh, you want a light, fluffy texture. Um, when you bite into it, you want to cr your teeth to crimp into it, and it actually shows the, the teeth marks still. Uh, you want... Uh, fresh handmade dough. You don't want uh, a dough mix. <laughs> and you can taste, I can taste, the difference between pre-made mix and handmade mix. Okay, don't try and fool me. <laughs> uh, then we've got three cake donuts here as well. Cake donuts are, can be very, very good, but more often than not, they are very dry and very bland. Uh, if you find a place that has very good cake donuts, you, you savor that place, okay? I'm talking straight into the camera. No, you got no, 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 no dude. I love the that's fact. Exactly you know, what you my favorite do. thing is like <laughs> most most of this podcast you've been talking just to Pat and I, and like when it comes to donuts, you're like, all right, dude, this is going viral. I want to make sure everyone out there in the entire world, even that's right, even you, Mongolian first division goalkeeper that yeah. listens to us, dude. We got a, like a, we got a review from Mongolia, and we're like, oh my, I didn't even know that was a, a wow, thing. You guys reach all the way, dude. There. We reach we reach a lot of we got we're getting reviews in other languages, and I'm like, how are you listening to the podcast? They're yeah. gonna be searching for donuts <laughs> searching. in Mongolia they're going to be looking for donuts oh my god so so uh I will say and then what you don't have here yeah because uh, this is this seems like a very bougie Santa Monica place. <laughs> not sure who bought these but they don't have old-fashioned that's how they do here. it in north of Montana okay <laughs> old-fashioned donuts are probably up there with my one and two favorites okay oh, yes. old-fashioned donuts are a very crunchy outer shell. The texture inside is very soft and pillowy, uh, very similar to a very good cake donut, but the outside is crunchy and crispy with a glaze over the top. Uh, it's fried at a higher temperature, so that's why it blossoms, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you also don't have crullers here. Crullers are very eggy, very light texture. Uh, not a lot of flavor, but uh, a good vehicle for glaze. Um, what is your feeling on fritters? Does Fritters that in the donut excellent. family? Okay. Fritters. Okay. Okay. Listen. Okay. Hey, I found the, like the best, and I know you're not gonna 
want it because it's vegan. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm all aboard vegan donuts. <laughs> the, there's a vegan apple fritter at a place called SK Donuts down here in Los Angeles. It's on like, uh, it's close to like Hollywood. West Promo Hollywood code area. I 18. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know the place. You know the place? I know the place. Have you had that vegan apple fritter? I have not had SK Donuts yet, but it's on the list of things I need to do. Unreal. Okay. That's like, that's my favorite donut. So in interestingly, when we were in Chicago, the best apple fritter I've ever had is in the ghetto. Like you need a Kevlar vest when you go. <laughs> But actually though <laughs> yes yeah uh, and it's this old old man that has been making just fritters for i don't know probably 30 years and that's all he does there wow uh they make other donuts too but the fritters are what you go there for best fritter i've ever had in my life wow uh, and so if you make it to chicago uh buy your kevlar vest and then go over um and and <laughs> dude i love the food in chicago yeah, food food chicago's food. unreal jeez what's the name of that place I'm trying to think. It's not Dat Donut. Dat Donut is another one that's in the ghetto that I've been to, and they have donuts that are like that big. Um, that's awesome. We'll have to we'll have to put this in the in the in the comment section. Yeah, we're I definitely gonna have to put this to, in the yeah yeah yeah, for yeah sure. in the show notes. We're definitely gonna have to put all these um, but to uh, reviews. Answer Tony's question. Yeah. Regular glazed, old fashioned. Okay. Or yeast raised, vanilla with sprinkles. Those are my two favorites of all time. Very easy to screw up, but impeccable when you do well. All right, so Tony, you get, that's what you gotta be looking out for uh, uh, <laughs> there in Chicago. By the way, the fact that Matt can't eat these right now, but yet- It's torturous. Dude, it, I, it's almost- We're a sorry, man. Oh my gosh, we're so sorry, but we had it, to do this. If you don't know, Matt also runs an Instagram page called- No, don't, don't, they have to find it. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's a secret very, page. It is it's very a, secret. It's a, it's a secret page. I mean, honestly, you could run a podcast just on donuts if you dude, really want honestly, to. I think that might be the next one on our network here. Just, this is, this is Matt's what we is would, gonna do a donut podcast. This is what we would talk about in Chicago and I and I call Matt the I call Matt like the real life Ron Swanson (laughs) because (laughs) do do you watch Parks and Rec of course I do yeah I take that as the utmost compliment yes and I knew you would uh but so I will say if you want the best donuts in LA the best cake donuts you go to Sidecar Donuts they have one in Santa Monica they have one in Torrance they have one in uh Costa Mesa if you want the best yeast raised donuts, Pat, I know you want some yeast raised donuts. You go to Donatsu in Little Tokyo. Donatsu? Oh, wow. Better, better than Trejo's. Vegan. Have you had Trejo's? No. Isn't that the actor? Yeah. Yeah, he's got a donut shop. Trejo's. Oh, tacos. that's right. Yeah, yeah, it's like right off Santa Monica. Really? In on Highland, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, guys, when you're in Los Angeles, <laughs> this is amazing. I mean, We've I done 20 him. minutes on donuts. This is incredible. <laughs> I can talk him through Chicago. I mean, listen, I eat donuts across the entire country. So if you need a, a donut place, that's what I wish all these questions were about. Is if I'm in this city, what donuts Dude, do I get? Maddie, Matty, honestly, why don't we do that? Like, <laughs> next MLS season. <laughs> By all means. Yeah, every thing. city. Let's just have you just, like, do your donut thing. We'll put it up on the on the, on the the YouTube page I mean, Facebook to be fair, stuff. I do that already. It's okay. just on this secret donut. Account, oh, okay, Which, Pat, okay. you kind I, of inspired me to do. Okay. It, is, it is great. And you, you have to me, find it. Okay, gotcha. You told me, like, the way that you talk about food is something that everyone needs to hear. It's special. And that's when I started it. That's uh, amazing. Like, that's what I mean, you guys got it firsthand. Here. Yeah, this yeah, is I'm a, passionate about. You it, understand, guys. dude? Do you have, realize how many kids out there are going to be looking for this Instagram channel now? Like, yeah. it's going to be unreal. And, but it's private, so do you realize how many kids are going to get? To <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh god! <laughs> Tony Anderson one being the first one. <laughs> Tony Anderson does not accept your follow request. <laughs> Oh my God! Speaking of giving back, uh, that's what today's episode was supposed to be about. <laughs> Goalkeepers giving back to the community. Um, for those of you guys unfamiliar, uh, Matt runs a, a fantastic uh, foundation called the Lampstrong uh, Program, uh, which we're going to talk about in a second. But first off, I want to start off with just in general the Goalkeepers Union. We talk about this on the podcast all the time to all you young goalkeepers out there. Patrick and I, we take it very seriously, the Goalkeepers Union. I think Matt as well does too. Um, Matt, what does the Goalkeepers Union mean to you? Uh, honestly, when, when you are part of the Goalkeepers Union, you can rely on any other goalkeeper for quite literally anything. I could call Pat and we could talk about whatever we need to sort out uh, in my life or in his life and – it's just inherently there, like you're there for each other. That's how it is. Um, 
And you can do that with pretty much anybody. It's easier to do with people that you've actually played with or know or are on a on a actual amicable basis with. But I could do that with goalkeepers that I've never even met before. You meet them and clear right away. Uh, you have you have a relationship with them. Uh, it's like that within the MLS. It's like that within USL. You're a brotherhood, and it's treated as such. And I think that's pretty much consensus with within all the goalkeepers so it I, I think it's absolutely it goes across the board regardless of what level of goalkeeper you're, you're dealing with i know personally we're very appreciative of the fact that pretty much any goalkeeper we reach out to is happy to to work with us and, and do something with us um <laughs> <laughs> we are not affiliated with any glove company whatsoever <laughs> we have no sponsorship with any glove company whatsoever just letting everybody know that right now offhand um Anyway, uh, that was a whole thing. That man. was a whole. Wait, do we need a glove sponsor? Because I have a guy. <laughs> yeah. oh. <laughs> oh, that's a long story. Yeah. That's there were there were some uh, individuals who were not allowed to some come onto the show yeah. because it was uh, quote a conflict of interest. Stop it. Even though we're just a podcast. Yeah. And. We're not just a podcast. We're the we're, best. we're the podcast. <laughs> we're the podcast. Honestly, for honestly sure. a ten-year-old boy in the UK ranked us as one of his top five podcasts in the world. So yeah, right he did. you know that that's <laughs> that set us it right there. Uh, Henry Saval, thank you again for that. We're thankful for you. Um, all I right. I don't know about donuts in the UK. I don't. Is the, I don't know. They call. They're not yes, they crumpets. Have. What's your crumpet story? <laughs> 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 this whole episode, we're really just gonna uh, call. We're just gonna call it like. <laughs> we, just, we just lost our baked, English audience. Co- baked goods. <laughs> I mean, uh, we've got churros in Mexico. You've got bole in Norway. Uh, there's all sorts. Of, there's uh, sufganyot is uh, is Jewish in Israel. Ooh, They've right. got those donuts. Uh, beignets. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I'm sure that there's some donuts in the UK. I I'm, I'm sure there is. Them. Yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. They we actually call, have a lot. Call them donuts. By the way, we actually have a lot of fans in the UK, and they're always like, "Why are you guys talking so much Americans goalkeeping?" I'm like, oh, "That's what we that's what we have access to. Like, we're we're here yeah, in the United States, Americans. so you know, because um, we're American. Yeah. So, you, you know, so uh, any any EPL goalkeepers, you know, if Jordan Pickford would like to come on the show, you're more than welcome to come on board uh, inside the 18. Just fly out here uh, to the United States. I'm sure you've got like a golf stream by now or something like that. So you're always welcome. Yeah, you're always welcome. <laughs> um, all right, let's get back to the, uh, let's get back to giving back to the community. Um, let's talk about things that goalkeepers can do to help each other out. You're talking about, you know, that brotherhood type of a mm-hmm. thing. I think a lot of times, you know, young goalkeepers, they see somebody maybe in a situation, um, that's not advantageous for them and, and they don't know what to do, but they want to help. So what are some great ways that young goalkeepers can help each other out? Number one thing is just, ask uh because you can't help if you don't know how to help um but the 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 suggestion i always give especially when people ask me uh whether it's goalkeepers or not when they ask how can i help or what can i do to help anything i always say that you need to find your vested interest um because there's always something that you're connected with that you can help and when you have a vested interest when you actually care about whatever you're doing, you'll be able to help 10 times more than if you're just helping because you think you need to. Uh, so similar to the guy that you were telling me in, in Arizona, he had uh, uh, a relative that he originally wanted to help and that's how he started what he was doing. So uh, it, it, and that's how I started Lampstrong is the, the vested interest. And so why don't you tell us just a little bit, you know, and, and uh, you know, Obviously, we're going to keep going into the topic, but I really want people to understand what Lampstrong is if they're not familiar with it. And, you know, feel free to tell them about the website and all that stuff where yeah, they can so, donate. So. Uh, so I was diagnosed with cancer when I was 17. I finished, tre- uh, I finished chemotherapy and radiation at 18. So right when uh, the previous question, when how, how many times was I training when I was 17? Well, uh, not too much because I was going through chemotherapy. But... Um, Once I was finished with that and I went off to college, uh, I knew that I wanted to help people similar to what I went through. Uh, So I started working with Leukemia Lymphoma Society, which is a blood cancer, which is what I had uh, at Ohio State. And then once I turned professional, I wanted to use the platform that I had to make a difference for people uh, in the situations that I was in. So I started Lampstrong Foundation. Uh, It's a 501c3 charitable organization. Donate as much money as you want, you get a tax deductible. Refund, you're welcome, thank you. Um, 
lampstrong.com or lampstrong.org. They'll send you the same place. Um, so it's just uh, finding, like I wanted, I wanted to make sure that people didn't have to lack the resources that I did when I was growing up or uh, when I was going through treatment. I was 17 and 18, very difficult time to go through treatment. Um, and I wanted to provide resources and be there for other people that were in that similar situation. So uh, I help kids and adolescents, young adults. Usually I help all ages, but anywhere from six years old to 18, mid-20s, because uh, I relate to them the most. I can talk to them exactly how they're going through treatment, what they want to do when they're done with treatment, because my goal is to go back and play competitive soccer. So uh, that's what we do. Dude, that's amazing. And I love the fact that you were bringing up that uh, it's not just about, you know, um, giving back from a monetary standpoint, you know, but there's access service as well, too, is something that you can do. And like you're saying, you know, people that, um, you know, want to be associated with the program who may not have money, like what are some great ways that they can they can give back to Lampstrong if they if they can't donate money or, you know, if that's not something that there is the number one thing that they can do right now. There's other ways that they can get involved. Yeah. So um, not even just to Lampstrong, but uh, money, uh, is very tricky when you donate to, to charities, not necessarily just mine, but when you donate to big charities, you have no clue where your money's going. A lot of time it goes to operating costs. A lot of times it goes to the lawyers. You don't know where your money's going. So it actually means more that you're actually doing something yourself, not just monetary value. So, uh, things that we can do for Lampstrong is, uh, engaging with the local children's hospitals. Uh, going on visits there uh, and if you reach out to Lamstrong we can partner and arrange soccer clinics for young uh, for young cancer patients and survivors um, we do that a lot we do tons and tons of adolescent young adult programming with uh, Children's Hospital Los Angeles right now that's who our partner is um, and it's it's worked wonders um, so uh, just reach out and then we can figure something out depending on where you are, what you like to do, and how you like to help. Um, because, like I said, as long as you have interest in it, it does a lot more than, oh, I can do this, I can do this. It's it's com combined effort. I think that's a really good point. And, uh, you know, one thing I, I do want to stress to everybody out there listening is that we do have insiders, uh, young insiders who've been doing a lot of great things like this. And I think it's because of that personal collection. So I want to shout them out right now. I want to shout out Jamie Campbell at Keeper to Keeper, Character Matters. Uh, Jamie Campbell is actually a U15 national team uh, women's goalkeeper, uh, you know, here in, in, in the Cal South area. And uh, she does phenomenal work, uh, a lot of stuff with Soccer Without Borders. So shout out to you. Shout out to Keepers Care for Kids, Dylan Mapson, uh, out of the Phoenix area. Um, you know, the work that you're doing, uh, you know, bringing toys and smiles, you know, to kids around the country, you know, um, with the toy donation uh, programs that you're doing uh, and working with different MLS keepers. And, you know, maybe there's a way that, you know, you guys can connect and stuff like that because, uh, you know, it's really cool when you see kids actually taking that extra step and, and not just saying, oh, this is something I want to do, but something that I, I can do. And then I think once you see that it's possible, once you really put it down on paper and go, okay, there's steps I can take to really make something happen, even if it's on a small scale, you know, Patrick and I, we were talking about just acts of service that are personal to you. Like, you know, what are some things that you've seen, Patrick, you know, uh, either kids do or yourself do, um, you know, that, that, uh, that are very simple, you know, for, for people to do? Yeah, I think it's always... I think it's always good to give time. Um, you know, if if money and resources aren't necessarily um, something you have abundance of, you can always give time. And time is, you know, arguably the the most valuable thing on earth. And just, uh, I think what I like is you know doing doing free soccer clinics, doing doing things that get you out in your community, whatever wherever you are, and and finding ways like Matt said earlier, to, to give back in a way that is meaningful to you. Um, you know, so personally, I, I don't consider, you know, this to be a charity by any means, but it's very important to me to share the knowledge that I've been given. And in, in a way, I think all those things are important because you're, you're, you're finding a way to give back. One of the reasons that I think, uh, you know, and, and I think thank you for bringing that up, Patrick, because, uh, you know, yes, we love talking goalkeeping and we love, you know, goofing around and talking donuts and stuff like that. Mm. But I honestly saw 
that there was just a lack of education out there. And I was like, well, how can I reach a lot of people? You know, how can I help reach a lot of people? And I think by getting guests such as yourselves, you're, you know, playing at such a high level and, you know, Patrick, you played at such a high level and, you know, and giving, you know, your, your, your feedback and giving your information of what you guys have, have seen and experienced and getting great coaches on here to break things down. You know, I feel like that's a way I can give back, you know, um, that is personal to me. Um, another thing too, you know, we were talking about the free clinics thing is, uh, it's actually something that we're, we're going to be doing out here. Um, there's a, a group called LA goalkeeping Academy that Patrick and I are associated with, and we're going to be doing a free clinic, uh, January 4th and 5th to give people the goalkeeper level one and two through United soccer coaches completely free of charge. Because I think one issue in this country is that education, coaching education is just too darn expensive. Mm. And a lot of, you know, a lot of young people don't pursue their, their licenses because you know, it's, it's a cost, it's a cost and it's a, it's a commitment. And you know what, uh, we said, you know, we're going to partner with AYSO and United soccer coaches and, and try to give back in, in that regard. Um, outside of, a this, I want to talk about leadership because I think one of the reasons that a lot of goalkeepers help and give back is because they are looked upon as leaders. Matt, do you feel that there's a responsibility for goalkeepers to be leaders on and off the field? On the field for sure. Okay. Uh, you are the general, uh, you see everything and you need to organize accordingly. Um, off the field, honestly, it's, it's person to person. Like you have to take it upon yourself to want to be a leader. Um, and I don't think it should be forced upon anyone. Um, but it's something that you need to come to on your own that you think this situation needs me to stand up and do something. Um, and I think that comes with experience, that comes with knowledge, uh, that comes with age, that comes with just overall life. Um, it's interesting though, you do see a lot of goalkeepers being leaders off the field because of what they've done on the field. They're used to it, they're, they, they like it, um, and they're good at it. So uh, I don't think it's necessary for them to be off the field. I think a lot of them are, but it's definitely necessary for them to be on the field. And, uh, and, and there's different ways to be leaders too, for right? Sure. It's not yeah. always a vocal thing. Right. Um, one thing I would say about Matt having played with him is, and one thing that I thought was particularly impressive is Matt would go through in pregame with everybody who is involved in corner kicks and set pieces. And he would make sure they know, knew exactly what their jobs were and exactly what he would be telling them in those moments. So everybody was on the same page all the time. And to me, that showed exceptional leadership. Well, it's interesting you say that because I, I, obviously we all want to win. And it's funny that you notice that because I learned that from Steve Clark, who's also <laughs> an exceptional leader. So right. I see him doing that. And I'm like, that's that great. Makes sense. So when yeah. I go and I have my opportunities to play, I'm going to make sure that I'm doing the same thing. So you learn from other leaders. You, it's, uh, and that's also the brotherhood, the GK union that you're talking about is, is uh, you learn great things from everybody else. And uh, so, yeah, I wanted to be a leader. Uh, and I saw attributes of other leaders that were, I thought were great to have. And so I use those in my own game. So. Yeah, you know, um, talking about the Brotherhood, the goalkeeper union, I, I just thought of one idea, you know, right now for young goalkeepers out there. If you're seeing a young goalkeeper, maybe he's on, on, a, on a lower level club team, you know, at your club, maybe you're the DA keeper and you got a keeper, you know, on, on a lower level team and you're seeing that they're struggling and they're having a tough time of it and, and – you know, take them under your wing, you know, because you probably have a little bit more experience than they do. Um, they're really going to appreciate it because, you know, quite frankly, you know, they, they want to be in your position. And, you know, if you give back to them, uh, you're, you're probably going to notice some things in yourself, too. Um, so, so just, you know, we should never look at each other. Yes, we're competitive people. Obviously, you know, we want to play and we want to win and all of that sort of thing. But you have to understand, you know, as, as human beings, Mike, uh, we were talking about how many different teams, you know, we all end up playing on, you know, we've, we've all played on a bunch of different teams, you know, we're always going to be, who knows how many teams we're going to play on, but we're always going to be goalkeepers. And, you know, that person might be, you know, your, your, your competition right now, but you know, they may not, you may be on a different team next year, you know, so, sort yeah. of thing, or, you know, you might be in a position where, you know, they're looking to hire you as a goalkeeper coach in the future, you know, cause they're a coach or something. So, you know, you stay connected, guys, and I think that's a really, really important thing um, to remember on Thanksgiving is, um, 
to just stay connected, give back and, uh, and really, you know, make sure that everything you do is with your heart and, and you're emotionally connected to it, uh, rather than just because you think you're supposed to do it, um, or because someone tells you to do it, you know, really, really find something there that you really want to do because you're going to put so much more into it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Speaking of, of putting much more into it, uh, I want to talk about uh, utilizing your uh, your strengths and your different attributes and stuff like that. Matt, by the way, you're, you're dude. People must have when you were at Ohio State. People must have walked around and been like, "Hey, man, yeah, that was great at the horseshoe la- last night." And you're like, "I don't play on the football team, dude." <laughs> I do get that often, actually. Uh, I, a lot of people do think that I play football. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you ever play football? No, American football? Never. Okay. Never played American football. Man, no. I, I, I can just imagine the high school coach being like, well, I, I was going to do a southern accent because every time I think of a football <laughs> coach, I just think of a southern accent. It's like, wow, why aren't you playing? Look at that body. Why aren't you playing? And I don't know what that is. That's well, a sassy school, woman, more, apparently. More about <laughs> I don't know what that was. Midwestern first voice accent, is. probably. <laughs> that was. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, in high school, I was five foot four and a little pudgster. So Whoa. I was like five foot four. 170 pounds, like not fit and tiny. And then my senior year, I shot up. So, huh. yeah. So I, they were not looking at me like, hey, man, why, why aren't you playing on football team? <laughs> yeah, they were definitely. No Bulldogs. <laughs> they were not. I went all out for s- football. All of a sudden, we're off from Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I, I went out for football my freshman year, and uh, I didn't like the helmet. I did thought, you actually? I did, actually. <laughs> I did because everybody did. Everybody went out freshman year for the football team. And, uh, dude, I remember the first day of double days when we're putting on those helmets, when we finally put those helmets on. And I was like, heavy, man. Oh my God, they're so heavy. Really? Dude, they're so heavy. And I was like, this is awful. Especially if you're not used to it, not used to carrying that. And I have a tiny head. So it was just like this bowling ball on my (laughs) head. Just like, yeah, it did not work out. Um, I want to talk about, so let's talk about those attributes again. Um, obviously, you know, you've got good size, you know, um, you know, you keep yourself in good shape. What's, uh, what are your physical stats? Just so. 6'3", 205. Felt like I was at the combine the way yeah. you said that. You yeah, know. I don't know what my hands are. <laughs> the wingspan. My wingspan. <laughs> uh, for you in England, <laughs> I don't know what that is in centimeters, but it's probably around I think it's 95 one, kilos. Yeah, how many, sto- how many stones do you weigh? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how many stones I weigh. <laughs> I've never understood the stone thing. What? I think it's like 14. Is it like 14 per stone? stone or something like that? I think you're like 1.93 meters. Yeah. I think that's so what we it got is. meters and we got 93 kilos. Yeah. Yeah. UK insiders, please shout out contact at inside the 18 media.com and let us know where the stones thing came from. I think it was cause like a certain Royal person had a stone and they're like, yep, that's, it's as that heavy. It's I'm as heavy that as that. St- I'm as big as that stone right there. And that was I'm the one that, that they worked heavy. with. They worked with. Um, okay. So we talked about your positioning earlier on on the show. You know, your positioning is very spot on and that's a great strength of yours. Um, when did you know what your strengths were as a goalkeeper? Uh, I would say two or three years into playing professionally. Um, and it's, it, it's something that you kind of have to figure out on your own as you play. Um, because obviously you see my size and everything like that. And I was just playing for the longest time in college. And even in my first two years, I was just playing. And those things were just tools that I was using to play. But when you actually start to focus on what about you as a goalkeeper helps you be the best goalkeeper you are, then you start to realize, oh, this is my strength. This is my strength. So when I say, Oh, I'm I'm six three. I use that to be. You're good only six three. I thought you were like six five. He's, dude. He seems he, he seems, seems taller than six guys. three. I mean, you carry yourself. I need to carry myself better at five eight. I need to like <laughs> up here, but my bio said five ten. So. <laughs> Have but, you noticed that every goalkeeper like under yeah, six foot, like yep. there's no, like, there's like a two inch window. Oh, there's there. such a two inch window. Is there really? Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I was like Ramondo. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure there's a two inch window. Ramondo's there five, too. five. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I was getting recruited in high school, they said five eleven cause they Ooh. said they wouldn't look at a goalkeeper under five eleven. Um, do you wear lifts in your shoes? Dude, I actually bought <laughs> lifts. I'm not kidding. Yeah. I did buy lifts I've heard uh, of people to, doing meet, that for to sure. meet with coaches or yeah. I would do things like wear my cleats when I first met a coach so, yeah, yeah. so that like they would just like subconsciously think of me as taller. Right? John Bush uh, wears platform shoes everywhere he goes. I don't know if you knew that or not. <laughs> we'll talk to him about <laughs> that. We'll talk to him about yeah, please, that. Please tell him I said so. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's amazing. Um, all right, uh, Patrick, let's let's talk about uh, strengths versus weaknesses, and Matt as as well too. Kind of like, does every goalkeeper have to have to have a strength that outweighs their weaknesses, or there are there some people who are just kind of like balanced at everything? To me, and this is just in life in general, but it certainly pertains to goalkeeping. If you put your energy into everything, there's no way that you're going to be very good at just one thing or two things. So every goalkeeper, the best in the world, obviously, are very good at a lot of things. But every goalkeeper has two, three things that they are very good at. And then other things that they're probably competent at. And then maybe one or two things that they need to improve on. Um, But Pat and I can attain to this like or attest to this, the things that make you very good are your strengths. And so when you focus on those and, and harp on those, that's what makes you very good. It's not having weaknesses, it's being very good at your strengths. Now, just like I said, if you limit your amount of weaknesses and you are competent at most everything else, you'll be a better goalkeeper. But when you really focus on your strengths and using those to be a good goalkeeper on the field, you'll be a better goalkeeper. Uh, and now, that's, that's, that's what I see in most goalkeepers around the league and around the world. Now, Patrick, do you think that knowing your weaknesses, and let's talk about weaknesses, you know, does that enhance your strengths because you're comfortable and you're secure in knowing, okay, like for instance, me, I mean, we joke about it and stuff like that, but I know that size is an issue for me, you know, and it's an attribute that is not, no matter how hard I train, it's not going to change, you know? So because I'm, once I became comfortable with that, I mean, I don't know if I ever became comfortable with it, to be honest with you, but once I I became at least more secure about it, I I noticed that I was willing to embrace my strengths of being able to come off my line quickly and Mm -hmm be strong in 1v1s and that sort of thing because I knew that that was something I was bringing to the table that maybe that 6'3 or 6'4, no, you know, no disrespect to you guys there, <laughs> you know, may, maybe didn't have have on me, you know, that, that foot speed. So Right. Yeah. Uh, so what was your question exactly? It's like if you're secure in your weaknesses, like once you are com- comfortable with them, does that enhance your strength? Um, I, would, I would say so. I think, I think truly the best goalkeepers, especially here in the MLS – do the things that they do well, really, really well. So you don't really pay attention to the things they don't do as well because they're so good at the things they do well. And I think that was something that I had a hard time grasping personally is I always wanted to like improve all aspects of my game, but you don't have the time and the energy necessarily when you get to the professional level to do all that all the time because you're going to be facing things like injuries because of your body wearing down and that sort of thing. So I'd, I'd say the best advice and advice that I actually got, I remember all these Sarkeyisms as we're sitting here. And a Sarkeyism is, uh, we both had this coach at Chicago named Alexander Sarke. And he said, and he would always have these. Sounds just, like a philosopher. He oh, was. he is. He, he is, very yeah. much is. And uh, I mean, brilliant guy. I, I personally really enjoyed working with him. Um, Anyway, he just he talked about how how important it is to do the things that you do well, do them well, focus on them, and be very very good at those things. He said one of the things he said is, and I'm gonna try to do I'm gonna try to do my best. Oh, to, I can't wait <laughs> to say. Are you gonna do an impression of him, uh, or are you just gonna, he's a Serbian uh, guy? He probably listens to this. Oh, that's so. amazing. He needs to listen to this. We're gonna have to tag him. <laughs> yeah. um, but he said, by the way, that's a crazy thing. I just uh, just really quickly before we go into the story there is like it's weird when you find out MLS goalkeeper coaches are listening to your podcast and you're like, um, dude, like you're dealing with like, OK, you're going to listen to me. All right. Whatever. Well, everybody wants to learn. That's, yeah. you know, at some at some level, he said one of the things he said to me was he said German shepherds are good at are good at everything, but they're only like a seven at everything. So. They're good at everything, but they're only like a seven. He's like, a bulldog is a 10 at aggression, but a zero when it comes to certain other things. And he's like, goalkeepers are very much the same way. Like sometimes you have very well-rounded goalkeepers that aren't particularly good at any one thing. But then you have other goalkeepers who are amazing at one thing and 
terrible at other things. And it's like, and he, and he didn't take like a stance as to one being better than the other, but he's like, that's that's kind of what it is. <laughs> I got the same. I got the same one. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of sarcasms, but I got that's the a, same one. Dude, yeah. you guys have to like write a like write a book of. You, of you could honestly, in terms of yeah. in terms of uh, the mental aspect of goalkeeping, he's one of the best goalkeeper coaches I've ever had. Wow. Yeah. Uh, he was so in tune with goalkeeping and uh, the mental aspect of goalkeeping. Uh, you learn a lot from him. For sure. A lot from him. But one, one thing, one thing that you mentioned with being comfortable with weaknesses, a perfect example of that is a smaller goalkeeper is aware that he is a smaller goalkeeper. So he adjusts his positioning. It's the exact same thing. Okay. So for me, it would be a strength. I'm a big goalkeeper, so I can stay higher on my line uh, in facing shots and whatnot. So, and Maybe, uh, maybe I am not as, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm not good at anything, but maybe I'm not as good at shots or, uh, crosses, right? So I adjust my positioning to stay closer to the line because I know I'm not going to be going for crosses or maybe I want to stay higher because it gives me a better opportunity. So you, you have always, to be You always aware. seem to be in the right place at the right time though, dude. I mean, I've literally have been watching hours of tape on you, which is, uh, which is, Probably creepy. a little yeah. creepy. Yeah, you're like, you're like, you're like, you're like, you're like, he's talking about how, how good looking I am, <laughs> how big I am. And like, anyway, um, no, uh, anything in your bubble, it just seems like you're, you got, you knew your strength and you knew like, okay, if I'm in the right position, anything in my bubble, I know that's mine. That's definitely one of my strengths. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and that's actually, so when I bring up, uh, size and, and knowing weaknesses in terms of shots from distance, I know that my foot speed is not able for me to get the balls in the corner. So I have to stay higher because I have a one step big push and that's how I save shots from distance. I'm not going to be able to be deeper in the goal and get to balls that are in the corner. I just can't do it. So you have to be aware. You have to be self-aware. That's good. Cause I have those little mouse feet. And so I'm, I do have right. big feet. And if I, if I stay high like that and I take one big push, they're like, Oh yeah, that ball was four feet away. Yeah. You realize that, right? Yeah. Um, all right, <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about diet. Uh, that was the direction I wanted to go because we, you know, we were, you know, we were, you know, having fun with your diet and everything like that, but that does play a big part in, in regards to harnessing your strengths because obviously your body is your strength. Mm -hmm. Um, so l let's talk about how is that, if you had a bad diet, would that really hinder your abilities? At this point in my career, 100%. I eat it. I eat a piece of fried chicken. I've got a bowling ball in my stomach for two days. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. And, and that, that comes with not eating that a lot. So your body reacts to it differently. But I would say when I was 21 years old, it really didn't matter. You know, um, even stretching. I remember I would, I hit 24 years old. I ran out on the field and I was like, Oh man, I need to stretch. But before that you could go out and hit balls all you wanted before even running and, and you have no problem. Um, but diet is similar to me. If you take it seriously and treat your body well and, and eat for fuel, I'm not saying all the time because you need to enjoy yourself, but eat for fuel, um, your body will thank you in the long run. Um, especially uh, once you're in your teen years, it's going to make a big difference. Uh, the way you feel, the way you perform, everything's important there. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think it's really important, especially uh, just going – exactly off what Matt said is, is, is getting in those good habits when you're young so that they're not harder to break as your career progresses. If you, if you're in a bad habit of just eating what you want all the time, and then you get older, like those things could, um, arise, you know, in the, in the way of injuries, in the way of, um, you know, being unfit, these sort of things uh, will all, will always come into play if you're if you're not as disciplined as you need to be. And one one of the big things about Matt and why one of the reasons he's been able to have the longevity in his career is he's diligent in what he eats. He's diligent in how he works, and he's I mean he's always working out. He probably works out f four times a week during the season, even five or six times during, during the season. Yeah. And that's, that's purely maintenance. I never now knock on wood. I have never had a musculature injury and I attest that to 
maintaining and lifting and taking care of my body in the season my entire career. Wow. You've never, that's unreal. I mean, I've had like strains and things, but never things that it's like, oh man, I'm out for a month. Yeah. Have you ever had any major surgeries? Yeah. My knees are not good. My knees are the knees of a 77 year old woman. (laughs) (laughs) Who plays 11s all the time. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Consistently. There's some 77 year old women who's like, my knees are great. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Those are the ones I'm talking about. Yeah. There's like some, some over the over 70 league right now. She's like, I don't you think know. She's listening to us. She's probably listening to us. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Actually, I was looking at our analytics. I don't think a lot of seventy-year-olds are listening no. to, to okay. the podcast. <laughs> That's uh, odd. Yeah. I know. Isn't that, a, isn't that a weird? <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. That's not our demo. Um, we do have some AARP ads coming up soon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Before we go, guys, uh, and, and we do want to give a, a, a you know final plugs, you know, to to Lampstrong. Um, whereabouts can people reach out to to Lampstrong if they want to get involved with the program? And uh, where's the best place for people to reach out to you personally if they have, you know, one of the cool things I love is we're talking about the goalkeeper union is that us as goalkeepers, we are accessible to young goalkeepers out there. Um, I know it humbles me and, 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 and I'm honored every time a young goalkeeper says to me, I can't believe you got back to me. I can't believe you got back to me. And uh, I go, uh, you think I'm a way bigger deal than I actually am. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what we're here for, yeah. man. But, uh, but honestly... It's our, that's why we do this. We do this because we want to give back. And uh, so, Matt, where, where's the best place for people to reach out to you? Uh, Lampstrong.com, Lampstrong.org. Um, you can reach out to me straight from there. Go straight to the Lampstrong email. Or uh, DM me on Twitter because I can actually see those. If you DM me on Instagram, you'll just be flooding the whole page where all the babes go that I don't <laughs> check. The bots? All the bots? All those Russian bots. <laughs> <laughs> the, was, the, the bots that go like... Hey, it, hey, goalkeeper podcast. Hey, and I'm like, handsome, oh, I'm winky like, face. <laughs> yeah, hey, handsome, winky face, goalkeeper yeah. podcast. I'm yeah, like, oh, exactly. that's not a person. You need date? <laughs> yeah, you need. <laughs> so I, I won't see the one on Instagram, but if you DM me on Twitter uh, or just send the Lampstrong email, I will see it. All right, so that's the best way. And uh, obviously you can peach Patrick uh, at contact at inside the 18 mediacom I think I said that right. Did I say it right? Contact at InsideTheEighteenMedia.com or at Goalkeeper Podcast on all social media platforms, except for Twitter, where we're Goalkeeper Pod, which sounds like we're some sort of a uh, some sort of diet thing that you would probably eat on some sort of crazy diet seem, program. To me, it seems pod. like uh, some sort of vehicle or something oh, oh. or something you put in your washing machine. <laughs> oh, <Goalkeeper> <laughs> <pod>. <laughs> You know what? Maybe we should create that. That's, that's not a bad idea. That We're dude, trademarking that right yeah. now. Patent that for all that dirty <laughs> goalkeeper gear, you, you parents out there who are listening. Goal Put in those pod. goalkeeper pods from Tide. Dude, that'd be amazing. It's we not do a bad a, idea. It's not a bad idea. For gloves and stuff? Yeah. My mom still thinks that my gloves just reek of odor, and I'm like, Mom, I go through a different pair like every week. They, they don't smell anymore. Yeah. That's, <laughs> it's okay. That's a, Dude, kids, wash your gloves. We have to do a whole it's episode. It's PTSD for I feel parents, like we have to do I'm an sure. hour yeah, episode sure. on yeah. how to wash gloves. Seriously. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. I tell kids all the time how to wash gloves, and I know we're running way over time, guys, but like, what? Well, it's what disgusting. What are they doing? Yeah, out of, they're, it's Thanksgiving. They're <laughs> waiting to watch, you know, the Detroit Lions play uh, because they always play on Thanksgiving. In Mongolia. <laughs> In Mongolia. <laughs> All our Mongolian fans out there are waiting to, <laughs> to see the Detroit Lions yeah, play Detroit Lions. against the Packers. <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly what they're doing. <laughs> they don't want to watch that Cowboys game, though, later. That's not that's not a thing. Actually, I don't know who's playing on Thanksgiving today. It's always yeah, the neither. Cowboys and the Lions. It is always the Cowboys and the Lions. That's what I thought. Um, all right, Patrick. Uh, I know uh, Patrick's also, you know, available on all the inside the 18 stuff, but uh, he's got his personal uh, social media handle as well too, where you can see stuff that's non goalkeeper related too. Um, adorable pictures like of my, your son, my life, your life, like your <laughs> real life. Uh, so it's uh, it's uh, Patrick McLean 24. Yep. I got it. I finally got good it. Work. It only took, I don't know, 12 episodes for yeah. me to get that right. It's uh, a good learning curve. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, guys, again, if you have a, a, a guest uh, suggestion or a topic suggestion that you'd like to see, uh, contact at InsideTheEighteenMedia.com. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. I'm going to say that again. Happy Thanksgiving to yours and yours. Is that how it goes? You and yours. You and yours. Yeah. All right, here, I'm going to do it like they, they do it on the, uh, the, the, on the CBS broadcast. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours from Inside the 18. We'll see you later. Bye. Yeah.